We're seeing how much Taco Bell has changed in the US and the UK in the past four years. In the UK, tacos only actually come in two portion sizes. You can buy one taco or you can buy two tacos as part of a meal. Those taco servers in the UK, they pale in comparison to what we got here in the USA. We have a one taco, obviously, a three taco combo that comes with the side, and of course, the 12 taco party pack. Back in 2020, our crunchy tacos were five inches long. Let's see if that's changed. So it turns out our crunchy taco shells in the UK are actually one inch longer than they were back in 2020. Our UK crunchy taco supreme now weighs 98 grams. Last time I weighed a crunchy taco supreme and it came to 110 grams. What about now? It now is 132 grams. Bad boy's about six inches. So far, shrinkflation might be a bit of a myth over Taco Bell. Let's see how a chicken quesadilla compares in 2024. The UK quesadilla is still just 10 inches across. Our quesadilla today weighs 230 grams. That's less than we got four years ago. U.S.A. Chicken quesadilla. Looks to be about nine and a half. Good wingspan on the chicken quesadilla here in the US. 196 grams. If my calculations are correct, it's about 50 grams lighter and like an inch and a half. The wingspan went down about an inch. I don't like the shrinkflation. I was sticking up for you guys earlier, not anymore. Here before us is the iconic Taco Bell Crunch Wrap Supreme. Back in 2020, you guys roasted me in the comments for not knowing off the top of my head what a six-sided shape was called. Well, joke's on you because I still don't know what it is, but that doesn't matter because I can just look it up on the internet. How have you still not learned that joke? Come on. Measuring from point to point, it's around six and a half inches. The weight of this one was around 236 grams. Six inches, all right. A lot of sixes in these measurements. Hmm, hmm. 274 grams for the Crunch Wrap Supreme. What was the last time? 275. Whoa, all right. Taco Bell bouncing back with a one gram difference. Back in 2020, the biggest thing on the UK menu was the classic cravings meal for six. That meal has now disappeared and been replaced instead by the cravings meal for four. So we've gained two speciality options and two portions of churros, but we've lost the two nachos and one order of cinnamon twists. All in all, while this meal may be designed for fewer people, I feel like you're feeding those people better with this meal than you were with the cravings meal for six. Back in 2020, our biggest menu item was this, the 12 taco party pack. But now in 2024, Taco Bell has an online exclusive group meal, the very intelligently named meal for four. For four people, surely you just. Drinks from a UK Taco Bell just come in one size. They don't advertise how much it contains, so let's find out. The UK cup contains around 470 milliliters. When we shot the first episode, there were still some lockdown restrictions in place and they weren't offering fountain drinks, so unfortunately we don't know if that's changed. Drinks at a US Taco Bell come in three sizes. The small, the medium, and the large. Let's measure them to check the sizes. Supposed to be 16 ounces, 15. Next up, we get the medium. I'm gonna be generous and say 18. The large Baja Blast. More on this later. It's supposed to be 30? 24 fluid ounces. Guys, why are you doing this? Let's take a look at how Taco Bell's prices have changed over the past four years. Here's the 2020 prices of some Taco Bell menu staples in the US. Crunchy Taco is 119. Crunchy Taco Supreme, 169. Burrito Supreme, 319. Crunchwrap Supreme, $2.99, and a large soda, $1.89. Here is the price of those same items today. Crunchy Taco, $1.89. Crunchy Taco Supreme, $2.89. Burrito Supreme, $5.89. Crunchwrap Supreme, $6.19, and a large soda, $2.99. Percentage-wise, those are some pretty sharp increases. The Crunchwrap Supreme has seen the biggest jump, rising price of over 100%. Guys. A recent report found that inflation from 2020 to 2024 has meant consumer prices have risen around 20.9% in the US. That means Taco Bell's price increases are way above typical inflation levels. Here are some prices from a UK Taco Bell menu back in 2020. A crunchy taco was £1.29. A taco supreme was £1.89. Crispy chicken burrito was £4.29. Crunch wrap supreme was £3.29. And a large drink was £1.89. I used the delivery app for the first episode, so my receipts weren't exactly store accurate. So these are prices I pulled from a picture I found on TripAdvisor of a Plymouth Taco Bell back in 2020. Here are the prices for those same items in 2024. Crunchy Taco is now £1.69. Crunchy Taco Supreme is now £2.49. Crispy 
crispy chicken burrito is now £5.89. Crunchwrap Supreme is now £5.49. And a drink is now £2.49. UK inflation from 2020 to 2024 is around 23% according to the Bank of England's calculator. We are still being charged more than inflation when we're buying our Taco Bell, but the price increases are not nearly as steep when compared to America. Many in the restaurant industry are feeling the squeeze at this moment and diners are cutting back on dining out. Taco Bell's positioning as a cheaper option means it might be benefiting from this. Taco Bell brought Yum! Brands 666 million <laughs> in revenue in the second quarter of this year, marking a 7% year over year increase. Keeping the menu fresh by adding new items and revamping old ones seems to be helping the business outlook too. According to the Yum! Brand CEO, David Gibbs, the Cantina chicken menu has increased chicken sales by 10% since its launch. Taco Bell is reportedly allowing franchisees flexibility when it comes to the products they offer. When we first shot our Taco Bell episode back in 2020, they had 7,427 locations worldwide. At the time of recording this episode in 2024, that number has risen to 8,564. The number of UK Taco Bell stores has increased dramatically over the past few years. In June 2019, we only had 39 locations in the entire UK, but a report from this year counted 142. That's a 264% increase in the past five years. Personally, I think Taco Bell has benefited from a lack of other affordable Mexican food options here in the UK. We don't have many taquerias or taco trucks. We mostly just have chains like Chipotle or Tortilla, which I would say are at a slightly higher price point and also more specialized in burritos rather than tacos. Compared to some other fast food chains in the UK, looking at you five guys, it's also still relatively cheap, which I do appreciate. Here is everything at a UK Taco Bell in 2024 that you won't find in the US. Here's everything at a US Taco Bell in 2024 you won't find in the UK. In the UK right now, we only have two exclusive taco options compared to the US. Here we have the crispy chicken soft taco. As the name suggests, it's a breaded and fried piece of chicken. Starting down here, we got the double stack taco, right? Oh, this one also has like the chips in it. That's a good gateway stack taco or double wrap taco, but there's better versions of that on the menu. Spicy potato soft shell taco. I like their spicy potatoes. It's like Taco Bell's answer to the UK's chip buddy. Cause it really is like potatoes in a tortilla. It's like French fries in a tortilla, pretty much. When it comes to tacos in the UK, the main event for me has got to be this. This is the naked chicken taco. What this refers to is the fact that the taco itself is chicken. There's just something like deeply unholy about using an animal as a taco shell. I say this is like an avid meat eater, as you can probably tell, but that to me is just very odd. I mean, the chicken's not bad. It is just kind of like stuffing a chicken nugget with salad, as you can imagine. UK fans have been criticized in the US. It has ridiculous menu items, the chemicals, the food, all that stuff. It fills me with so much delight to see the UK Taco Bell menu slowly become the US Taco Bell menu. How do you like that, UK? Your food's getting bigger and weirder. You're slowly becoming America. <laughs> I don't know how bad Taco Bell fans in the UK need to complain, dare I say riot, to get these to come to your shores, all right? I get it, food coloring, this and that, restricted in the European Union, blah, blah, blah. This is the Nacho Cheese Doritos Locos Taco. Comes in regular and supreme form. This thing is amazing, I love it so much. It's just every bite just short circuits your brain. Whatever it takes, get this to come to your shores. You will love it, it's fantastic. Come on, I mean, this should be the regular taco on the menu. It's so good. How do you make it better, you ask? Well, this is one of my go-to Taco Bell items when I go there. Doritos Cheesy Gordita Crunch with nacho cheese. It's that kicked up a notch. We got one of these wrapped in a gordita and glued together with nacho cheese. It's been sitting for a minute. I know it doesn't look very good, but these things are so good. It's got the sauce in it. I'm telling you, this thing is fantastic. I got to try those Doritos Locos Tacos on the Foreign Exchange episode, and honestly, they're really good. I would happily, happily have them over here. Both the US and the UK menus have a ton of burrito options. A lot of them share similarities, but strangely, there are no burritos from the UK that appear on the US menu in this exact form. So technically, these are all exclusives. Starting right here, we got the chicken enchilada burrito. We have the beefy melt burrito. This one looks very similar to the cheesy double beef burrito in the US. Oh, I think this is the cheesy double beef burrito. It looks a lot like the UK's beefy milk burrito. Ours is rice, double beef, 
It allegedly nacho cheese and those little crispy chips in there that were crispy at one point. I think what makes this a melt is the fact that it contains the kind of liquid nacho cheese sauce, which I personally really love. That for me might just be kind of like the archetypal Taco Bell burrito. It hits all those classic Taco Bell notes of like beefy, cheesy, salty, bready, oily as well. Which to be honest, is kind of all I want from Taco Bell. This one is the beefy nacho cravings burrito. What sets this one apart is that it has pieces of nacho chips in there. Next up we have the volcano burrito. As Joe correctly pointed out in the first episode, this was released in America as a promotional item for the movie Congo. While I can't comment on the film, I can comment on the burrito. And it's good, I have to say. This one has the lava sauce in there, which I personally really like. Offers a lot more heat when compared to just the seasoning of the beef. Another favorite of mine, the grilled cheese burrito. Now, a bit misleading, you think, oh, like is it like a grilled cheese on the inside? No, 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 no. They grill it shut with cheese. Grilled cheese, you got it? Mmm, mmm. Mmm, bean burrito, what it says in the tin, everybody. Here we have the seven layer burrito. This one I need to single out because the copywriting on the website for it is fantastic. Loads of time for that. They explain all of the ingredients, but as if they're like sitcom characters. Surprisingly, none of them are meat. This is actually a vegetarian burrito. If they wanted to make it an eight layer burrito, whack a bit of mincemeat in there, you're laughing. Long gone are the days of the seven layer burrito, the vegetarian's choice. Taco Bell was like, get out of here with your non-meat eating ways and replaced it with the beefy five layer burritos. I don't know if the beef counts as a six layer or that's part of the five. They lost at least a layer, possibly two, and added meat. So I think that is hilarious. Here we have a crispy chicken burrito. It's got those same crispy chicken strips from the soft taco, but in a burrito. This one is the spicy chicken cravings burrito. I think with the exception of the volcano burrito, when something is described as spicy on the UK Taco Bell menu, that usually just means there's jalapenos in there. Here we have the double cheesy black bean cravings burrito. That's a lot of words. This might be kind of similar to the cheesy bean and rice burrito in the US. And then last but not least, the cheesy bean and rice burrito. Now UK has the double cheesy black bean. So I'm wondering if this is just that plus rice. This one I'm excited for. This is a limited edition menu item. This is the beefy fries burrito. As the name suggests, they've taken fries and they've put them inside the burrito. I mean, come on, that's genius. Britain as a country loves putting chips inside other carbs. See, for example, the chip butty. So this makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, the texture is just like pure stodginess, but I personally quite like that. The fries are quite heavily seasoned, especially just when you get them on their own. So you get a lot of that fry seasoning in there. I actually think the lack of shared burritos kind of speaks to Taco Bell's ability to take the same 10 or so ingredients and repurpose them in a litany of ways. If Reddit's math checks out, there would technically be 1,023 possible burrito combinations you can make with these ingredients. Taco Bell has a specialities section on its menu. Over here, we spell it with an extra I compared to the US. None of that specialties nonsense. In the UK, this section only has two exclusives. Firstly, we have a baby quesadilla. My sweet, sweet baby boy. It is just a smaller version of the quesadilla. And then here we have a chicken crunch wrap supreme. In the UK, the chicken crunch wrap supreme is actually a default menu item. You might be able to get one by customizing a crunch wrap in the US, but it's not actually on the menu over there. There's a bunch of cheesy things now while we're shooting this, probably not by the time it comes out. One thing you get is the big cheese crunch wrap supreme. This thing is stuck to the paper. And there it is. It doesn't taste like a cheese at all. Like it's really nacho cheese heavy. I was trying to come up with like an equivalent of what that might look like in the UK. And the best I could do was maybe putting a giant mini cheddar inside a crunch wrap, which sounds pretty fire. Look at this, this thing is just like so flimsy. It tastes enough like a Cheez-It, but it isn't like a powerful Cheez-It. It's like a Cheez-It at like 60%. I'm gonna try and just, sorry, I can't pick it up. Here is one plain Cheez-It cracker that they put in these uh, Cheez-It menu items. And Taco Bell tested out the big cheese at menu back in 2022. That completely missed me. I didn't know that. And apparently the public went wild for them. So they announced its return in 2024 at the Live Maz Live event. I actually don't think I've ever had a cheese it before, but I know I'd love that thing. Just okay. It's super soggy. Maybe it's been sitting for a while and that's on me, but not impressed. Uh, over here we have the stacker, which looks to be like a quesadilla that they just were like, we'll just do this. So get on the go. Why this over a soft shell taco, I have no idea. Three cheese chicken flatbread melt. I'm just gonna lighten through these. Ugh. 
I mean, it's just, it, it's just, it's not flatbread. It's like a gordita shell. They're just, they're, they're putting the same things that they all have in the back together and naming it a new thing now. Mexican pizza, it's back. Remember when everyone on the internet pretended like this is their favorite thing in the world? So uh, Taco Bell's like, hey, it's back. And it's like, again, no one's talking about it anymore. Mexican pizzas are perfectly fine. Steak quesadillas, come on. Isn't this just, the, the stacker was ground beef. This is steak. And then finally, a veggie bowl. I bet this was like, okay, we're taking away the seven layer burrito, but here's all the layers in like bowl form. Taco Bell recently announced a new product line, Cantina Chicken. Compared to the regular chicken they use, this one is slow roasted and seasoned with a blend of savory Mexican spices. Some people have called it the best thing to ever happen to Taco Bell, which seems like high praise. And it currently comes in several forms. So you got the Cantina Chicken Crispy Taco and the Cantina Chicken Burrito. All right, it's supposed to be the best thing they've ever done, huh? It has a nice flavor to the chicken, but I mean, it's not amazing. Here we got the chicken burrito. Mmm. Burrito, good. Crispy taco, also fine. I think that might be a press release talking. This is good, but it's definitely not the best thing Taco Bell's ever done. Let's check out the sides on offer at a UK Taco Bell. Remember those chicken strips from the soft taco and also one of the burritos? Well, you can just get them on their own. They actually do come with some nacho cheese sauce by default as well. Here you can get the loaded beef nachos. This one distinguishes itself from the uh, nachos bel grande, I believe because of the guac, which is nice, I guess. Uh, they taste a lot better than they look. Taco Bell in the UK has three loaded fries options. Firstly, we have the cheesy topped fries. So these ones are <laughs> pretty sad looking, I can't lie. What's happened here? It looks like a seagull has just... So these ones are Taco Bell seasoned fries, which they then top with the cheese sauce and some sour cream. From there, we go up to the Fry Supreme. We have the same foundation. We have fries, cheese sauce, and sour cream, but then these ones also get some chopped tomato and some beef. And then from there, we have the Fries Bel Grande. Composition-wise, they are the same as the Supreme fries, they're just a bigger portion. The cheesy Fiesta potatoes, chips in, you guessed it, guac. They come together in the UK, you have to get them separately. Black beans and rice, once again, in the UK, they come separately. This, I believe, is pinto beans and cheese. Our next exclusive side is a cup of seasoned rice. It's not the worst fast food rice I've had by a long shot. And once again, you can just straight up, for I think a dollar, get a big cheese it cracker. I must know. Yes, it's a cheese it, but it tastes a little bit different. It's like not as strong. They're making different cheeses for Taco Bell, go figure. Taco Bell in the US is a pretty extensive breakfast menu. Breaking it down, basically you get four options that you can customize the fillings for. There is the uh, cheesy toasted burrito, which I think is this, a toasted burrito, which might also be this, a quesadilla, and a crunch wrap. They can be purchased a la carte or a combo with a drink and a hash brown. So this is going to be the cheesy toasted breakfast burrito. Got eggs, cheese, and of course bacon in there. You can also get in sausage and potato. Then of course, there is the breakfast crunch wrap. This is the California crunch wrap. You can also get in bacon or sausage or a combo, of course. And of course, the quesadilla, breakfast quesadilla. This is eggs, cheese, and a the meat. They got sausage, they got bacon, whatever. Huh? I actually do like the Taco Bell breakfast. And of course, get a hash brown, either inside a crunch wrap or on its own. Mmm. Currently, Taco Bell in the UK does not offer a breakfast menu. I had some Tex-Mex food on my last trip to the US and it's really good. I know Taco Bell might not be doing exactly that, but close enough. And that brings us to Sauce Talk. Sauce Talk. Here are all the sauces at a UK Taco Bell. We're starting with the mild salsa. Yeah, that's got like a real tang to it that I wasn't really expecting. Depending on which Taco Bell you go to, they might have a hot sauce, but ours just went straight from mild to fire sauce. Flavor profile wise, very similar to the mild salsa one. It's definitely on the like higher end of my spice preferences. It's your standard ones, mild, hot, fire, Diablo. Diablo's all right, but I like the fire stuff. The fire sauce has the best flavor in my opinion. It's also the breakfast salsa, which I had before, I do like. This one is the lava sauce. I like this when it's in the volcano burrito. You could consider it a hot sauce or a salsa, but it's kind of got more of a creamy texture. And this is this one's a new one to me, the avocado verde salsa. Mmm, yeah, not bad. Nice green sauce to it. Here we have a creamy jalapeno style sauce. I had a quick look at the ingredients label and it doesn't look like there is any actual jalapeno in here. So I guess it's just like a legal thing that they can't call it jalapeno sauce. It's kind of like a mayo version of the beefy melt burrito is the best way I can describe that. Then we have these various sauces. I think this is just straight up hot sauce or red, red sauce. Spicy ranch, yep. Next up is a Cali ranch sauce. 
it's ranchy. Next up, we have Taco Bell's caramel sauce. Now this is designed to be consumed with the churros, which we'll get to in a second. It's a jalapeno ranch. Like this one, I'm assuming the avocado ranch, because it's green, verde. Mmm. That's one so far, but this one's also pretty good. These two are good. Next up, we have guac of moly. This is a really small cup. It's not terrible. I personally like a guac that's a bit chunkier, whereas this one has kind of been like blended, so it's almost like a bit aerated. And then finally, we have the nacho cheese sauce. Uh, the texture is disconcerting. You should not be able to hold the liquid upside down for one and not have it go everywhere. This is the jalapeno ranch. Oh man, it's got a kick to it. Oof. Oh, yeah. All right, these sauces are good. I like them. On to our desserts. The only exclusive dessert we have are the Cinnabon Delights, which are little cinnamon, Cinnabon bites with frosting inside. You give them orders of two or 12. That'd be a nice thing to uh, have in the morning with your coffee. Cinnabon is trouble. They're good. They're like, uh, almost like churro bites, but with a really sweet cream cheese frosting on the inside. Here in the UK, we have one dessert option not found in the US and it's churros. The Taco Bell churros come with their caramel sauce for dipping. I do remember those churros, I did like them. Finally, we're on to the drinks. Taco Bell mostly stocks Pepsi products. We have so many exclusive drinks here in the US. Just got a few hits, a few favorites. Starting down here, of course, a Mountain Dew. Right here in the middle, we got Baja Blast. Now this episode marks four years of Baja Blast. Absolutely going to town on my insides taking years off my life at the end and making my hair gray. I don't know why this stuff is still legal. Oh, yo! That's a definition of addiction. I can't stand it yet, I can't stop drinking it. Ah, oh man, it hurts my gums. Ugh. I think it's the Dole Strawberry Lemonade. Mmm, it's good. This is the Brisk Mango Fiesta, I believe. Peach Mango, the Dragon Paradise Sparkling Iced Tea. You know, I bet these tasted a lot different when they were cold and the ice had melt, but right now this is just all. Since we made the first Taco Bell episode four years ago, there have been some changes to the menus in both countries. Hilariously, in the time we've been making this show, the Mexican pizza had time to disappear and reappear on the US menu. Time is a flat circle. I'm kind of surprised by the fact that the menu in the UK hasn't really lost anything since we first shot four years ago. We still have the volcano burrito on the menu. The US has lost the Power Bowl which was a salad bowl with chicken. The only bowl currently still on the menu is this, the veggie bowl, AKA all the toppings in one bowl. When it comes to drinks, we have lost a dragon fruit freeze beverage. In the time we've been making this show, Sierra Mist has died and has been replaced by Starry, which I also wish was dead. What else have we lost? The Flaming Hot Doritos Locos Taco, the Cool Ranch Doritos Locos Tacos, Beefy Crunch Burrito, it came back in 2023, but then it left again. The spicy double steak grilled cheese burrito. Honestly, the trend in the UK seems to be slowly adding things to the menu rather than taking them away. That makes sense because our menu was pretty limited to begin with. I guess Taco Bell just wanted to see if it would work in the UK. If they're planning on adding more stuff in the future, I would love to see the breakfast menu over here. I also think that Mexican pizza looks really fun. And of course, those Doritos and Locos tacos. Here is the nutritional info for a crunchy beef taco in the UK in 2024. 176 calories, 10 grams of fat, of which 3.4 grams are saturated, 9.5 grams of protein, and 276 milligrams of sodium. Here's the nutritional info for a crunchy beef taco in the US in 2024. The UK is slightly higher in calories and protein, but ours has more saturated fat as well as sodium. Has this changed at all since our first episode four years ago? Here are the 2020 stats from the UK. So the UK taco has actually gone up by 17 calories in the past four years. Here are the crunchy beef taco stats from 2020 in the US. Here is a UK crunch wrap supreme. In 2024, it contains the following. If you compare these to the stats from four years ago, you'll see that they've actually managed to reduce the calories, fat, and sodium pretty substantially. That's not the case in the US. Here's the crunch wrap nutritional info from 2020. And here's the nutritional info from 2024. None of the values went down, and while ours used to have fewer calories than the UK's crunch wrap, they have turned the tables on us. One of the things that shocked all of you at home when we made our first episode was the amount of sugar in some of these beverages, notably the Mountain Dew Abaja Blast. In 2020, I explained that it was 110 grams of sugar in the large Baja Blast by even pouring it out to illustrate it to you. Now, I'm glad to announce that in the past four years, Taco Bell has managed to do something incredible. They have found a way to squeeze one extra gram of sugar into the large Baja Blast. That's right, back in 2020, this beverage had 110 grams of sugar. And now,
111 grams. It's either killing me or making me the strongest thing on the planet. I know we Brits like to laugh at Americans for stuff like this, but I was shocked to discover while researching this that we're not that much better than they are. The most sugary drink on the Taco Bell menu is regular Pepsi. A 1.5 litre bottle contains 165 grams of sugar. Obviously that bottle is meant to be shared, so let's break that down per 100 millilitres. 100 millilitres of UK Pepsi contains 11 grams of sugar. The same amount of US Mountain Dew Baja Blast contains 11.7 grams. We're only a tiny bit better off than they are. Let's check out the ingredients of some of Taco Bell's core menu items. The recipe for the seasoned beef in the UK actually hasn't changed at all in the past four years. It has a total of 20 ingredients. Same as in the US, the beef remains unchanged from before. 22 ingredients in total. Whew. A flour tortilla in the UK in 2024 contains 16 ingredients. Here's everything in a flour tortilla. Ah, a tortilla, here it is. Get a little of this guy, right here, all those ingredients. That's a total of 27 ingredients, but arguably that number should be higher, as the US doesn't specify what its flour is enriched with, while we've counted the UK's extra enrichments. The main difference seems to come in the form of dough conditioners. Taco Bell in the US adds things like wheat starch and sodium methyl sulfate to preserve the tortillas as well as give them that extra stretch. Look at that, look at that. That's all of that sodium methosol metha metabisulfate? What do you think that, does anyone know what that is? We also have dicalcium phosphate in our tortillas. One of the most common uses of that is horse supplement. It gives you a noble steed, stronger bones and teeth. Oh God. Interestingly enough, both recipes have changed since 2020. Here's the old US tortilla recipe. That old recipe just had 20 ingredients compared to today's 27. We have gained. Malted barley flour, yeast, sorbitan monosterate. Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this again after four years. Sorbitan monosterate, ascorbic acid, sodium, here it is again, metabiosulfate, cornstarch, dicalcium phosphate, tocopherols, and citric acid. And at this time, we've ditched potassium sorbate and vital wheat gluten. Guess it wasn't that vital after all. A surprising amount has changed in the UK as well since 2020. The old recipe had 15 ingredients in total. In the past four years, the UK tortilla has ditched palm oil, sugar, and diphosphates, and these have been replaced by glycerol, finely kibbled rice, guar gum, and dextrose. None of the new ingredients have any health concerns, which is good. It's also good to see them ditching palm oil due to its environmental impact. Taco Bell in the US uses a three cheese blend in its products. And just like beef, the ingredients list has not changed from 2020 to 2024. That is not the case in the UK. In 2020, we used a three cheese blend consisting of the following, colored cheddar cheese with annatto, Monterey Jack cheese, mozzarella, and potato starch. In 2024, however, we've actually changed to a four cheese blend containing the following ingredients. Mozzarella, Monterey Jack cheese, processed cheese made of water, cheese, butter, modified starch, milk protein powder, salt, E331, whey powder, flavor, E407, and E508 colored cheddar cheese, colored with E160B, and potato starch. Instead of being a one-thirds blend of mozzarella, cheddar cheese, and Monterey Jack, it's now a one-quarter of those three, plus a new processed cheese. It is worth noting the color used in the cheddar cheese is still annatto, is now just being referred to by its E number. It's often used as a salt substitute in low-sodium products. It also happens to be one of the three chemicals used in the three-drug cocktail for lethal injections. Enough of it in the bloodstream will cause cardiac arrest. Several US products, like the Doritos Locos Tacos, uh, the Mountain Dew products, Brisk Mango Iced Teas, contain yellow number five, a petroleum-based food dye. This is banned in the UK after studies linked it to causing hyperactivity in children and translucent mice. Many US items, including Mountain Dew, Mug Root Beer, and several of the sauces contain calcium, disodium, EDTA. This is banned in the UK due to animal studies suggesting it causes adverse reproductive and developmental effects as well as colon cancer. Bro, I was just eating that. Let's take a look back at some of your fantastic comments from the original Taco Bell episode. Kevin says, it's horrible, quoting me, it's like horrible, yet I'm addicted to it. And he says, yeah, that's Taco Bell in a nutshell. I agree. This stuff, I mean, I have the worst headache right now. And all I can think about is that delicious Baja Blast. I'm literally like, man, a Doritos Tacos Loco would hit the spot right about now. UK guy sounds like he's about to report the weather forecast. I'm gonna take that as a compliment. I feel like weather people usually have nice voices. And if you look to the map over here, you'll see that we have a taco front moving in from the east. Expect heavy salsa showers overnight. 
The American dude makes the UK guy look so calm. It's the Baja Blast, all right? It's driving me crazy. Has my perception of Taco Bell changed since the first episode? No, I still think Taco Bell is ridiculous. I still get it. I still shouldn't get it. I always look forward to shooting this episode so I get to eat all this Taco Bell, and then I always regret it because we eat so much of it and then I'm exhausted. Warning, the comments below are filled with people not knowing UK has a Taco Bell. Like I said, they didn't have that many stores around the time we shot that first video. So I'm not blaming people for not knowing that we have Taco Bell, but they have now expanded so much that hopefully more people have been able to try. Do you go to Taco Bell more or less since making this first episode? Uh, I probably go to Taco Bell less. That's because my wife doesn't eat it anymore and I rarely am out and about and stopping at a Taco Bell. So yeah, definitely not hitting it as much as I used to. I go to bed too early for Taco Bell. Overall, I don't think my perception of Taco Bell has really changed since that first episode. I always kind of appreciated it as just like cheap, affordable, often drunk food. And I think it kind of still slots into that bracket for the most part. The first episode we shot was my first chance to try most of the menu. Honestly, since then I have been back like semi-regularly just because it is, like I say, quite cheap, affordable, hot and ready. Also burritos, they're like self-contained, you know, not a messy snack. Also special shout out to my hair from that first episode. It was still kind of the pandemic. Barbers weren't really open. I don't know what I was doing. Hey, thanks for watching the episode of Food Wars. We upload a new one every Sunday here on the Food Insider channel. So be sure to subscribe and let us know in the comments what we should compare in future episodes.